I've been using Vim for quite some time now, around 15 years to be exact. Wow, I'm getting old. And for me, the best thing about Vim is that you're always learning something new. And sometimes, every so often, you just kind of see something that blows your mind. And in this episode, I'm gonna show you 10 quirky things in Vim that you can use to just blow people's minds. In fact, earlier today, I showed my wife and kids and they were pretty impressed, even if they had no idea what I was showing them. So grab your HJKL keys. We're gonna learn some crazy Vim stuff today. Okay, so the first crazy Vim trick we're gonna do is apply ROT13 encryption. Now, ROT13 is an encryption method that substitutes each letter with the letter 13 letters after it in the alphabet. It's an old school cipher and it's rarely used for anything, really. So how to do this, what you wanna do is open up a file where you have some text that you want to encrypt. I'm just gonna open up gem file right now for you know whatever reason. And then what you wanna do is actually go in visual mode to the thing that you want to encrypt. You hit G and question mark and now it is encrypted. You can see here that my text completely changed and that it's actually using every letter that is 13 letters after the current letter in the alphabet. Let's do this again just to show it off. So now my gem PG search line here, I'm gonna type G question mark after highlighting it and we can see now it is TRZ and then in quotation CT underscore Frenepu. This gem is CT Frenepu now. Now this is a fun little trick but you're probably never gonna use it unless of course you're leaving jokes for your co-workers. You see, ROT13 isn't exactly a state-of-the-art cryptography, but it is a fun little trick that's built into Vim. Okay, so next up we have kind of a weird one. We can insert random data from dev urandom. Now, you can read data from any file directly into your buffer, and dev urandom is a random byte generator on Unix-like systems. So, when we're in Vim, we can type in our command mode, read, bang, head, dash C 100 from dev u random. And what that does is it actually reads stuff from the random byte generator in Unix directly into your Vim instance. Now, unless you're trying to quickly test handling of random binary data, it's mostly just a, a fun little thing to do and you normally wouldn't use this, but it's worth knowing that with the read command, you can read things into any buffer in Vim from any other file. Now, the third kind of weird thing you can do in Vim is you can actually browse the web with built-in NetRW. Well, kind of. You see, Vim has built-in NetRW that can do a little more than just browse local directories. It can actually open certain remote resources like FTP or SCP, and you might even be able to open some HTTP websites. So how does this work? Well, you can type E in command mode to actually open another file or browse a directory in NetRW in Vim, but if you open an HTTP resource, it will actually download that using something called libcurl, which is built into Vim as long as it's actually compiled on your system with libcurl. And what it'll do is it'll actually open the HTML source of a website directly into a buffer in Vim. So we type E in command mode and we can paste an HTTP resource into here. I have a nice little website that I found that has like a, it's just an HTML math quiz. And if you do that and hit enter, this will actually download the HTML source and you type enter and it opens up into a new buffer, the actual source of this website. So you can kind of browse the web in Vim. Well, not really, but if you ever want to see some HTML directly into Vim, you can open it using NetRW just like this. Kind of a cool little trick. Now for number four, this quirky thing I actually think is extremely helpful and I've just never heard of it before, which again, you always learn something new every day in Vim. You can convert a file into a web page using the command to HTML. Now to HTML takes your current buffer complete with syntax highlighting and it converts it into an HTML file that replicates the colors and and the formatting. So let's see this right now. We can open a file. This is a random Docker file that I have in a project. And we can type in command mode to HTML and hit enter. And what this does is it creates a new file and we can see that right above what we have right here. This is dockerfile.html. And we can see that it actually created a new file and it's completely in HTML. So now if we actually go to our files and now you can actually open this HTML file and look at that. It has the syntax highlighting. It has the comments as everything 
perfectly laid out right here. This is actually kind of amazing to me. Now, there are many more modern and easier ways to do this, like with GitHub gists or Markdown stuff, but 2HTML does feel really nice if you quickly want to just throw whatever is in your editor into a web page. It's actually kind of awesome. Now, for number five, I don't know if you know this is available, but you can actually hex edit a file with native Vim commands. Now, I wasn't aware of this, but Vim can function as a hex editor with the right incantation, letting you inspect and modify binary data at the byte level. How do we do this? Well, first we want to actually open a file in binary mode. So we type vim b with a file name. We'll just do dockerfile.html. And now that we're in the file, we can convert this file into a hex dump by typing percent bang xxd. Now this is a hex file and we can edit individual bytes inside of this file. And then to revert back, we can do percent bang xxd dash r to revert this back to the normal file. And this is kind of insane. <laughs> Now, unless you're debugging binary files or messing with memory dumps, you likely won't do raw hex edits in Vim, but it's kind of cool to know that this is there. Now for number six, this is an old relic that you can use in Vim. You can type capital Q to enter the old EX mode. Now uppercase Q puts you into the old school EX mode, which is a line by line command interface, which is reminiscent of the original VI, which is 70s style. Now this is a fun one that would trip me up from time to time because because occasionally every once in a while while I'm in a buffer, I'll type capital Q by accident and I'll find myself here. But you can actually do some productive stuff while you're in EX mode. Okay, so how do you do this? Well, in normal mode, you press capital Q, which is shift Q, and you will now enter EX mode. You can see the status line changes at the bottom here. Now you can type commands like P to print lines. You can type D to delete lines. Now there's a lot of stuff you can do in here. Like you can type ranges like one through 10 delete will delete one through 10 lines. You can type Type reg to list all of your registers. You can type ls to actually list all of your buffers. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do, but to exit it, you want to type visual and that will exit EX mode. Now you would never use this because EX mode is a slow, archaic and basically replaced by normal mode, but it's a novelty for those who want to party like it's 1976. Now, another quirky thing you can do in Vim that you may not be aware of, I know I wasn't until just now, is that you can filter text through shell commands with bang while you're using a range. Okay, now what does this do? Well, you see, you can pipe a range of lines through an external command directly from Vim and return the transformed text into the buffer. So how do you do this? Well, in visual mode, I'm gonna type shift V to enter visual mode here. I can go down a few lines and I can transform these lines using a shell command. So if I type bang, which is the exclamation point command, and I type rev, this will reverse all of these lines using the shell command reverse. Then I hit enter and it will be placed back into my buffer, the changed text from the output of this shell command. This is a really powerful thing and maybe there are some interesting use cases for it, but I think it's a little esoteric. It can be fun though, if you wanna do some random shell transformations in the middle of editing, but you'd have to figure out how that fits into your workflow yourself. Another really quirky thing you can do in Vim, and I don't know if you know this, is that you can do math in insert mode using control R equals. So what does this do? You see, Vim can evaluate expressions on the fly in insert mode. You can do quick math without having to leave your buffer. Well, how do you do this? Let's say you're in a file and you go into insert mode and you want to actually do some math. You can type control R equals, and you can see that the status line down here actually changed. Now, if you type two plus two and then hit enter, it actually does that math for you. So now I have the number four inserted into my buffer. Now, this is handy for some basic arithmetic, but a calculator or a dedicated tool is usually more straightforward, but this is kind of a neat little trick if you're in a pinch. The next quirky thing you can do in Vim is use Vim as a developer diary with the R date and the R who am I command. What does this do? Well, you see, you can insert the output of any shell command as we covered earlier with that rev thing that we did directly into your buffer with R bang and then command. And there's a couple built-in Unix tools you can use to make this kind of interesting. You see, when I'm in normal mode, I can type colon R and then bang and then who am I to run the who am I shell command and insert that text into my buffer. Let's see what happens. I hit enter and there we go. Typecraft has been inserted into my buffer. I can also type in normal mode colon R bang date. 
and that will put the date into my buffer, which is a great way to start any journal entry that you may want. Pretty fun. Last but not least, the very last quirky thing that Vim can do built in that I want you to know about is help 42. What the hell does that mean? Well, you see Vim's docs have some hidden Easter eggs. So if you type help 42, you will actually enter an Easter egg that I think is really, really fun. Type help 42, hit enter, and it says, what is the meaning of life, the universe, and everything? 42. And it gives a little bit of an explanation here. Douglas Adams, the only person who knew what this question really was about, is now dead, unfortunately. So now you might wonder what the meaning of death is. Now, this is a snippet from a really fun book called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, written by Douglas Adams. It's an amazing book, and it's purely for a chuckle, but it exemplifies that Vim devs have a sense of humor too, even though you may not think so. So all in all, this is just a fun little video to show off a few of the quirky things that you can do inside of Vim with built-in Vim features. Some of these are actually fairly useful and some of them are, well, completely useless, but I think they're all fun and that's part of what Vim is all about. It's all about having fun with your editor. There's so much you can do with it and you can always learn something new any given day. Now make sure to subscribe for more Vim, Linux, NeoVim, and all kinds of cool stuff on this channel and hey, Thanks, nerds.